offer up and let go merged at their buy and sell apps. Electric car batteries may have a leasing option. Future satellites will orbit lower for a better and faster reception and real Wi-Fi dangers. All that and more next on the Computer Doctor Show. You're listening to the Computer Doctor Show, your source for technology subjects affecting your business and personal life during this new normal. Your host is an award-winning office technician and IT specialist, author, tutor, ethical hacker, and recent winner on localbest.com as the best computer shop in Tucson. Broadcasting live, here's Aaron Moss. Hello, Tucson. Welcome to the Computer Doctor Show. I'm Aaron Moss, your host. Good to have you with us every Saturday at 2 p.m. right here on KVY 1030 The Voice and streaming live on YouTube on the 1030 The Voice YouTube channel. Our open lines, 520-790-2040. Feel free to call in anytime with your comments and questions. On the show today, uh, connecting to strange Wi-Fi in public places can cause some problems. I met a woman a few days ago that may have been hacked by connecting to her neighbor's uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, we'll get a chance to revisit that occurrence and uh, hopefully she'll be on the phone with us today. But first, uh, some highlights of tech news this week. Let Go and Offer Up are two popular buy and sell apps that function the similar way that Craigslist uh, uh, is and still is, uh, but it's more of an, of an app version of uh, Craigslist. Uh, the two apps merged uh, resources a few days ago to form one powerful buy and sell app. And uh, I must say a, a little bit about uh, Craigslist. I've, I've used Craigslist in, in uh, past businesses uh, when I lived in New York. And uh, it's, 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 it's an awesome site because you get to tell people about the things that you're selling and the things that you're doing um, uh, to the general public. And it was, it was free. And that's what the, these two other... Uh, apps that have uh, merged, let go and offer up. So they're it's uh, they're an excellent uh, resource uh, to use if you if you're looking to buy something or you're looking to sell something. Uh, what is the most expensive part of your car? Do you think is it the engine? Is it the transmission? But what about an electric car? Uh, what is the most uh, expensive part? Turns out it is you guessed it, the battery. Now there's a Chinese company by the name of Neo Inc. and uh, they are uh, introducing what is called a car battery as a service and basically what that means is uh, they uh, are able to put uh, your car battery or your electric car battery into a financial system where it's actually the battery is actually on lease uh, the same thing is true for the same for something similar like if you're if you need to get uh, tires put on your car uh, a buddy of mine he has a is this big old truck he's so happy to have this big old truck but uh, do you know how much it costs to get uh, tires all around on a truck like on some of these big trucks now just four tires twelve hundred dollars twelve hundred dollars for a set of tires now um that's fine if if it's within your budget you know to to, to have tires like that but a lot of people can't afford those types of things so a lot of tire dealers a lot of tire dealers uh they're offering financing on tires well apparently now you can do that on car batteries if you have a uh electric car so uh that again that company is uh, neo incorporated uh google earth images might even be getting much clearer they um uh, uh, there is a company by the name of Earth Observant. They won an Air Force contract uh, last month that plans to orbit satellites much lower in the thermosphere. So the Earth has uh, several different uh, layers of, of, uh, of it within its atmosphere. So the, 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 top, the, the top layer is like equivalent to outer space. I know there's a technical name for it, but the one just below that is called the thermosphere. And right now, a majority of the satellites that are out there that are in operation are in the outermost layer. So they're actually thinking about having satellites in the in, in one thermosphere, one atmosphere inward. That actually makes the satellites closer to Earth. And the nice thing about that is uh, anytime you have something closer, anything wireless actually has better reception. Uh, we use satellites for navigation. so. So, you know, sometimes when you're uh, driving in your car, your GPS, it says that the location is accurate within six feet or accurate within 
36 feet or something like that. So now hopefully it can be a little bit more accurate, dare I say accurate within one foot. You know, we could... Uh, we can estimate that. So uh, all kinds of benefits happen when you bring satellites uh, closer uh, to the Earth, and that's what we can expect in the near future with uh, Earth observant. There is a term called street smarts that refers to a person that can uh, handle and survive, negotiate things that happen in public. It involves uh, maybe how to walk, how to stand, uh, what to wear, um, and even how to talk. There's also what we like to call cyber street smarts, where a person knows how to handle, survive, and negotiate scenarios online. Not necessarily that there's actual rules to follow, but obviously there are some things as to what to click, what sites to avoid, what is abnormal, what normal is, theoretically, and then to enter into a situation where you can say, okay, wait a minute, something's not quite right here. Let me be a little bit more cautious. So sometimes it does become necessary to learn a little bit more about uh, cyber security street smarts. Um, she was supposed to come in the studio today, but I do believe we have Tiffany on the phone uh, with us today, and she was brave enough to uh, talk to us about her experience this week. Are you there, Tiffany? I am. Yes, thanks, thanks for being on the Computer Doctor show. So uh, tell us uh, what you experienced last month. Um. Well, I had, I guess the first indication was my phone was telling me that there was a data, a data limit um, warning, and it was way through the roof. And I had already exceeded, it was like the first day of my cycle. Um, it was showing, you know, over 40 gigs, I believe it's called. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I could go back to my history, and never in the two years it's ever been that, and it's only been... You know, I was already saying I had maxed out for the whole month. Um, so that definitely was the first sign. It was something that was very strange. And I recall I had um, that morning, I had my, the phone was off, which typically never dies throughout the night. And when I, when I turned it back on, it did a system um, update. Mm -hmm. And then shortly after, it was giving me that notification. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was just like, thought that was very peculiar. And I, and I do somewhat familiar. I'm pretty precautious about, you know, not ever clicking on any phishing emails mm -hmm. or text messages just in case. And I know there's been a lot going around lately with everything else happening. Mm -hmm. And um, I kind of just started going through. You can go and see where I went. I went and further investigated what app was using so much data. Mm -hmm. um, it was... I believe a place I uh, was saying one of my play service versus the play store. And um, then it was also had permissions such as it could run in the background. It had overwrite positions granted. And then I just went through all my apps and then there was other very common apps such as like, I think it was my clock or FM radio mm -hmm. that had the same thing where all these permissions were given as far as you it tells you overwrite, which means it's saying it can, this app is, I guess it's saying mm -hmm. it can view as something else. It can be, mm -hmm. a, you know, a disguise. Mm -hmm. And um, so, and then you kind of got to keep going further. I put into what are the other permissions, and you can tell behind that it had like several other apps that it was allowing it to run under that I hadn't downloaded. And um, yeah, <laughs> I figured <laughs> something went wrong. <laughs> Okay, you you touch on some very uh, excellent excellent points because um, the uh, the first thing that you had mentioned that you first saw high data usage high data usage that's huge. Now this really applies to uh, you know we apply it to computers. When I'm fixing computers, uh, one of the things I do is I turn the computer on without turning on any other uh, uh, services or any other programs, and I just look at the at the uh, clock rate and what's happening with the processor when it's supposed to be in standby. If it's running 100 miles per hour when it's in standby, it must be doing something, okay? Then we can, you know, there's a way to, to find out what is running. But uh, usually if it's a malicious piece of software, the developer of the software has already thought of that. You know, they've already uh, found some way to hide it in a list of uh, other programs that are running that would make you not suspicious of it. But it is running very, very high. 
So high usage or high uh, clocking is an indicator that, hey, something is not quite right. Okay, it's just not normal. So kudos to you for that, for picking that up. To, to, and that, that was kind of like the first sign that kind of led you to do more investigating, right? Correct. And then if I, I didn't say no, I turned off the permissions, but the, to be able to disable it or uninstall it mm -hmm. was then like, not an option. It was a grayed out. So I wasn't able then to do that, which is frustrating because I didn't know what to do then because it's like I didn't have my own administrative permit or authority over it to tell it what to do. And so I would go in and try to clear it out, clear all the cash the cookies mm -hmm. and the data and tell it no, it can't have permission. And then it was just as quick as I could be doing it. Then there's other apps popping up with more permissions and I just think, couldn't seem to get ahead of it quick enough. So at that point, you're pretty much circling the, the bowl kind of, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. you, you kind of start at the top and then what the people that d design these services, sometimes they can be very, very tricky. And by the way, all these are, are, uh, uh, services that are malicious. Their intent is to uh, compromise you, or their intent is to uh, is to make you do something else. So, if you see mm -hmm. high usage on your phone, one of the first things you should do is turn it completely off, let it cool down okay. because it's probably heating up, and it's probably going to be draining your battery as well. Um, and uh, turn it back on, okay, and see if it continues to use data. If it is, then you know that there's something in your phone that is that is communicating. And then what you would need to do, kind of go back into history. Try to remember all of the apps that you've recently downloaded, like within the past couple of days or week or two. Um, and start deleting, going backwards in time, deleting apps. Uh, obviously, apps that you know are trustworthy, things that you've been using for years, obviously those are still good. You don't have to delete those, but any new types of apps. Also, updates of already existing apps, okay? Mm -hmm. You might want to be very weary of, uh, you know, so if, if you have a phone like mine or anything modern, what you can do is you can take a look at the uh, amount of uh, updates that you have and only update the ones that you feel need to be updated. For example, your calculator. Your calculator that's on your phone, that rarely needs to be updated. If there's an update on your calculator, okay, you don't have to update that. Just leave it alone, okay? It's, it's right. you know, if it's working. Well, there was an option that said go, like, to, un, um, to like, uninstall recent updates. Mm -hmm. or, um, and I did that, but it wasn't allowing me to uninstall the app or just so. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there was a way around that because I try to then tell it just to basically go back to the previous update, whatever was before the most recent one. And mm -hmm. I don't know if that was the, what a, the yeah. route I was supposed to take or not. Something else that I've noticed, um, because uh, I, I know you travel to, uh, we, we were talking a little bit, I know you do some traveling to Phoenix uh, back and forth here from Tucson. Um, mm -hmm. When I travel to Phoenix from time to time, I do notice that my phone does go into a heightened level of of uh, of of activity only when mm -hmm. I'm on certain sections of I-10. What I think is there, I think there might be a uh, a malicious tower, and it's extremely expensive. And uh, if you actually do a little bit of research, there are some police agencies that actually have a uh, a, a fake. Well, I'm not going to call it a fake. It, it it is real, but it's a it's a pseudo tower, cell phone tower in the trunk of their uh, police cruiser. And what this device is designed to do, it's designed to uh, act as if it is a tower so that all the cell phones in the area will see that as a stronger signal and connect to that. And basically it just relays that signal to the real tower. But if it goes through this device, it also uh, pings the locations of all of the uh, of all of the cell phones in the area. So if you're ever watching so what these... what would be the point in that? Like so that they is, can find yeah, people. <laughs> exactly. So that they can find people. So if, so if, for example, let's say, it, let's say that they know that there's a terrorist uh, within a, uh, within a one mile radius. Okay. Mm -hmm. They can drive this special car, this special van or something. Okay. And that van will pick up all the cell phones in the area. And if they know any other information using uh, counterintelligence and all that, they can identify the phone if it actually is in that area. And they can say, okay, that one is pinging to this 
um, uh, 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 triangular uh, uh, measurements, so, yeah. and then they can find out that the that the terrorist is in this house. And that's when you have the live cameras on the news and everything. Yep, the terrorist is right here in this house, and we have a camera right on it right now. The police are working mm-hmm. in it. That's but how they're able to find it. Do you think criminals can have access, obviously, to something as a, <laughs> a device like that, where they can have a, a device that acts as a tower and get other cell phones to attach to that. See, now you're thinking like a hacker. <laughs> <laughs> you see you see how easy some of these things are. Uh, but uh, these are the things that we Could have to be aware of. you your cell phone not to um, automatically update to uh, a new tower? Should you tell it to only... Um, there are ways that you can tell your phone to... Like, like, for example, if you're at home, there are ways that you can tell your phone to only connect to a specific tower. You may have to... Mm-hmm. Uh, communicate that with your provider. Uh, there's probably an app for it, um, but uh, th- th- these are the ways that you know uh, uh, activities are are are, are being monitored. Uh, and if if you think that this is uh, encroachment or infringement on your privacy, think again, because a lot of these apps uh, are tracking your location all the time, and it's not that hard to uh, to hack into uh, some of these things. So okay. when you get like a text message that it says, you know to claim something, blah, 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 click here, and then it, this is the craziest little link. Um, and then, obviously, I don't click it, but it's my dad or somebody who's not sure what it is, and they click it, I believe, and it, you're allowing some kind of software or spyware or malware to then in, um, insert itself onto your phone. Mm-hmm. Now, are, are people having to pay for these apps or services or to do those? Types of well, mo- most of the most fishing? the most dangerous apps are always free, because the developers or the hackers that develop them they don't mm-hmm. they want they're not gonna they know that if there's a cost involved that's going to lessen their victim count. So obviously it no, would be free. No, but for the hacker, are they having to like pay to? Do uh, oh the, yeah, oh yeah. There, there's yes? there's okay. there there's a cost of time and expense. Obviously, uh, building these things uh, requires special software, special hardware. Um, so, but, uh, but there's but not it, apps out there that anybody can just like download an app and then go and dish somebody. Purposely. Not, not directly, but okay. there, there are, there's, there's always vulnerabilities in, in things. And if they find the vulnerabilities, then they can use something that was designed for something good and then use it for something bad. Same thing with the stove in your okay. house. Okay. Yeah. Why would you have, uh, uh, why would you have gas running into your house if it wasn't for cooking? But if you have children mm-hmm. in the house, you want to tell them to stay away from the, uh, stay away from the stove because it's dangerous for children to be playing around with the stove. But it's right. something that was intended for 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 good purpose. But Nuclear that get, power. <laughs> it gets it gets abused. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Tiffany, for calling in. You you've uh, you've really helped us uh, out on the show. Um, and uh, I'll get with you next week because we have some yeah, uh, computers that we're going to fix for you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, next. Uh, All right. <laughs> um, uh, up, up next on the Computer Doctor Show, two powerful tips, uh, two or three powerful tips on how you can protect yourself online uh, from my upcoming book on cybersecurity. We'll also get a chance to take some of your call on our open lines at 520-790-2040. You're listening to the Computer Doctor Show on KVOI 1030 Tucson. We'll be right back with this quick break. Ugly Goose Car Rental is new in Tucson, providing a low-cost auto rental alternative for just $100 per week. The only catch? The cars are ugly, but very safe and reliable to get you to work, school, shopping, and all your important appointments. To reserve your $100 a week car rental, call Ugly Goose Car Rental at 520-261-0439. Again, 520-261-0439. Solar is popping up all over town. Why? Because solar just makes sense. Say goodbye to expensive summer electricity bills. Call or text Julie Festerling at Icon Power, 520-307-1013. Avoid the new 7.9% price increase with the utility company. Call Julie at 520-307-1013. Icon Power will help you take control of your electric bill. 
Perfect Look Photography is a photography business that serves individuals, families, wedding parties, children's parties, quinceaneras, and family reunions. We also do headshots for actors and model portfolios. We photograph all types of events in Tucson and communities in Pima and Santa Cruz counties. In addition, we provide more types of photos than any photographer in Tucson, including green screen, art photography, montages, and DVD slideshows. We provide great photos at great prices. For more information or to get a quote, please call 499-4209. Computer Doctor of Tucson is the best choice in desktop support in Tucson. They fix error messages, power and boot problems, install of software and hardware, and much more. You can come to them or they can come to you or even have a remote support session so they can fix your issues over the phone quickly. Give them a call at 261-5508, 261-5508. Visit them on the web at ComputerDoctorTucson.com. Computer Doctor of Tucson, because technology is great when it works. Welcome back to the Computer Doctor Show. Uh, during the break, uh, my uh, board operator, Tom, had informed me, so when you are coming back uh, into your home area, it's good if your phone is, uh, is uh, programmed to uh, connect directly to your Wi-Fi, and that will avoid a lot of those issues where you have an alternate tower being uh, relayed to the real tower so that that is something but uh, when you're out in the open when you're driving around and you don't have a uh, wi-fi to connect to um the the possibilities are there but the thing about it is don't do bad stuff don't do things that would make the police want to track you down okay just just be a good honest person that's that's the best advice that anyone can give you with the time that we have left, uh, this next segment on the program I'd like to call the Online Protection 101 course because I am on a mission to keep the public informed and safe online to, and to reduce the victim count of online crimes. Uh, so we're going to consider maybe just two cybersecurity tips today and ultimately there's going to be a book with all the tips that will become available for purchase. Uh, last week we talked about creating your own cipher. Uh, and then there was uh, to take different routes, routes home and then also to block your uh, webcam with tape. More and more people are using webcams, so make sure that you're being able to block them. Uh, the next tip, was, which is actually tip number 29 in the list, is to use a P.O. box. Uh, obviously, that is uh, an obvious reason why. Um, Any time that you have mail or sensitive data coming in through the mailbox in front of your house, if it is not secured with a key, um, somebody can always go in there of course it's against the law but that really doesn't stop people from doing it um, and if there happens to be a box of checks in there or if there happens to be uh, something that they can use it's going to be gone okay uh, so use a p.o box uh, the next tip is to burn or shred sensitive documents again this is something that uh, my mother taught me we would sh shred and uh, destroy documents especially documents that have uh, that have uh, uh, information on it. I live in Pima County, so uh, we're able to do a uh, uh, kind of like a, uh, a, an actual burn. So I keep all of my sensitive documents in a drawer and I, until that drawer gets piled up to a certain thing, we just take them out to the 55 gallon uh, steel drum that we have outside and carefully, people know what I mean by carefully, uh, burn them in that uh, drum. And, and the reason why is because we I actually burned down my shed by doing that, by not watching it. So, uh, but be careful with it. Shred or destroy these documents uh, or have some sort of system of uh, removing the, uh, the sensitive data. If you can cross it out with a pen or marker in such a way so that the uh, real information doesn't bleed through, anything that you can do to make that happen. Uh, tip number 31, don't use digital copiers that belong to other people. And by the way, I, uh, the reason why I say this is because there is a recycling uh, way that, um, for example, let's say that there's a law office or a doctor's office or even a police station that has a digital copier. When that copier, when they get rid of that copier, guess what never comes out? The hard drive. The hard drive is in that copier. And you know what happens to that copier when they get recycled? They just get resold to auction. So if you go to a business auction, you can pick up a couple of copiers, pull out the hard drive and get some free software off the internet and start looking at documents that were either scanned or copied or printed through that copier. They're still sitting there, right there on that uh, copier hard drive. So watch out there. 
We would like to thank our awesome sponsors, Icon Power, Perfect Look Photography, and Ugly Goose Car Rental. Please do business with them. They are local and keep, help keep this show on the air. My name is Aaron Moss, your host and technology expert, Tom Fairbanks is in the control board. Listen to the Computer Doctor Show every Saturday at 2 p.m. right here on KVY 1030 The Voice. Stay safe, enjoy the rest of your weekend, and we'll talk to you again next week. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Computer Doctor Show. If you missed any part of this live broadcast, we post all our episodes online at computerdoctorshow.com. Remember, the world is getting more and more tech, and so should you. To stay current with technology, listen to The Computer Doctor Show each week for local and global tech insights. If you have suggestions for a topic on a future show, send us an email at info at 